Lord forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack make it backflip. Telly Hank it with the action. With the vital speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Gold BBS is on a beamer. When fat cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the prop and not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm Baby Main. Just caught a touchdown. Mexican drug cartels are moving to Minnesota. Law enforcement officials say cartel operatives are expanding in the upper Midwest. Most of the drugs in Minnesota come from Mexico and more cartels are sending their own people to handle the operations. While there are no reports of embedded cartels in the area, officials anticipate an increase in activity. Oh, it definitely is a concern. We're not we know if it happens else, other places, it certainly is going to be happening here and, and already is happening. Wisconsin has had problems with it. They've, had, they've harvested or, or located a number of these grows that were done by uh, Mexican cartel people. The Drug Enforcement Administration says the number of cartels present in American communities increased by more than 1,000 from 2008 to 2011. Today, the Justice Department is announcing significant enforcement actions against the largest, most violent, and most prolific fentanyl trafficking operation in the world. That operation is run by the Sinaloa Cartel. According to some numbers provided to me today by the Hennepin County Attorney here at the courthouse since 2018, so over the last five years, the number of overdoses, both fatal and non-fatal, has more than doubled in Hennepin County, very much to blame here. Opioids, the county's new top prosecutor, making it crystal clear today. She is all about getting help to those with substance use issues, but she is going to go hard after those dealing. The Minnesota Department of Health reported overdose deaths topped 1,000 in 2020, jumping 27% over the previous year. In the case of overdoses, the vast majority of the deaths go through a medical examiner's office, and the vast majority of those deaths had toxicology testing. People ages 25 to 34 were hit the hardest with a 57% increase. The seven county metro got it worse than the rest of the state, up 40%. Opioid deaths were up 59%, but 82% of all the opioid deaths were from fentanyl. In fact, fentanyl fatalities shot up 81% in a year. Now, people sometimes hit me with the, come on, man, all you're doing is glorifying black crime. Now, this is going to show you otherwise. If you're doing some mob shit, you're on the radar. Minnesota, what up, though? She'll have pop a lot on the check-in. Now, today, I'm going to do my absolute best to try to tell you guys the story of a 30-year-old St. Cloud, Minnesota woman who in her quest for power would go from a minor criminal or kind of a minor criminal to being charged with what in my belief is the biggest drug crime that you can be charged with. And that female I'm speaking of is going to be a woman by the name of Michaela Lee Knott. Now, Kayla, which authorities say she went by, would go from the small town of St. Cloud with a little less than 70,000 residents to directing shipments across the border. Now, according to reports, Michaela Lee Knott's criminal career would start in and around 2016 when she would be arrested for selling a small amount of methamphetamine to Minnesota state troopers. Now, in a situation that sounds like you're probably going to end up with probation, maybe, but the amount seized would result in her receiving a four-year prison sentence. She would only serve one year of that prison sentence and would eventually be released in early November of 2018. Now, in a crossroads at life where some people would face the harsh realities of prison and decide to do something different and go in a different direction, but the one-year sentence that Michaela Lee Knott would receive wouldn't be enough to deter her from a life of crime. And more than that, it probably showed her exactly how far that she wanted to take it. Now, with just being a few years removed from her one year stint in prison, Kayla would do something that would change her life forever when she would decide to take a trip to Mexico, 
a country that we all know to be synonymous with some of the most powerful drug cartels in the world, with not in any order the top five being the Guadalajara, the Gulf Cartel, the Tijuana Cartel, the Juarez Cartel, and last but definitely not least, the Sinaloa Cartel, who we happen to know well through the exploits of El Chapo. Now with the opioid crisis that the United States is currently in, with a lot of lawmakers pointing directly at the Sinaloa cartel for the record number of overdoses that we see in today. Court documents wouldn't go exactly into detail of how the relationship started, but sometime after traveling to Mexico, Michaela Lee Knott will reportedly join forces and become an operative for the Sinaloa cartel, with her having a defined role in the organization. She was instrumental in orchestrating the trafficking of fentanyl from Mexico to different Midwest states like Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota. Now, between September of 2001 and August of 2002, law enforcement officials would make significant narcotic seizures that would eventually be traced back to a group that the United States government determined that Michaela Lee Knotts was the head of. The indictment alleges that the group would operate in the cities of St. Paul, St. Cloud, Carlton, Melrose, and Alexandria in Minnesota, as well as Rapid City in South Dakota and Fargo in North Dakota, with prosecutors in a case claiming that the most devastating consequence of Kayla's action was the surge in fentanyl overdoses in those particular regions. Prosecutors will also speak of how extensive her crimes was. She would be facing charges of money laundering as well as being the head of a continuing criminal enterprise, a charge which is rarely, if ever used, against females. After escaping Mexican police on two previous attempts to capture her, they would eventually catch up with her on August 31st, 2022, when she would be arrested by the Tenola police in Mexico. With the media going on to describe her criminal activities as astounding, in the end, she would be accused of commanding a group of at least 18 people. Seeing how much evidence that the government had against her, she would decide not to take the case to trial. And in her plea agreement, she would reveal that she sent millions of dollars in profits to her partners in the Sinaloa cartel through wire transfers and money orders. Two females in her group, one by the name of Mary Thompson and another one by the name of Melanie Quick, was said to be some of her main lieutenants. At trial, the 29-year-old Mary Thompson would be sentenced to more than eight years in prison for her role in the conspiracy, with Melanie Quick receiving upwards of nine years behind bars. The government would say that the organization went on to make more than $10 million during their, during their little more than one year relationship with the Sinaloa cartel. Michaela Lee Knott is currently awaiting sentencing for her relationship with the Sinaloa cartel and her role in the continuing criminal enterprise. We definitely gonna keep our eyes on that because we wanna see what that sentence is probably gonna look like. If you ask me, that sounded like a 20 year situation, but we all know how the feds work with that previous conviction she had in 2016. That's gonna enhance our points. Now, if we got any jailhouse lawyers, any law librarians tuned in, y'all definitely let us know what y'all figure that Miss Knox is looking at. Now, I know we don't get around here much, but if we got anybody tuned in from Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, from Bismarck to Fargo, y'all go ahead and tap in. Y'all run that comment box up. Y'all make sure y'all hit the red bell and subscribe button. How we normally do it around here is y'all hit the comment box below. Y'all let me know what stories I need to tell, where I need to head to, what I missed, what I got wrong, what gangsters I need to talk about. If that's a little too much for you, I understand that. Y'all tapping with me directly. Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. And per usual, y'all know the rundown. Be back before you know it, telling y'all more tales of the streets. Shades Popular. Salute the almighty mob.